Hi everyone, kind of a, an interesting experiment this week. Now what I've got in front of me here is uh, my actual in-class pre-lab for this experiment, right? So I thought, oh, I'll just check and I'll go through and look at your uh, pivot experiment and just see how well they match up. And <laughs> the interesting news is they don't really match up at all. Yeah, it's the same experiment, but it's a completely different work through. Okay, so, you know, I'm not going to give you my standard um, spiel here from the regular semester because it doesn't really apply okay so actually the one on pivots actually a little bit easier okay it's mostly a review of Beer's law and then how you actually manipulate uh, concentration versus time data to get those linear plots of first and second order okay so it's an integrated rate law experiment it's not actually a temperature one which I thought it might be from last week <laughs> faulty memory right so it's actually um, an integrated it actually culminates with an integrated rate law plot right okay so if you look at um, the connects two packet refresh your memory of that stuff before you look at this lab you'll be fine okay so that's actually <laughs> three labs from that second packet and none from the third so you know that's just the nature of the online I guess okay so I'm kind of throwing this out <laughs> and um, what we're gonna do <clears throat> I'll talk you through the theory you need for this lab, okay? So it's actually kind of interesting. What you're going to do, you'll look at some experiments where you use cuvettes, okay? And cuvettes are these lit little kind of um, rectangular, typically if they're expensive, they're made of crystal, but the ones we use are made of plastic. So they're this clear plastic little bottle essentially, right? And they're kind of square, kind of cross section and kind of longer, okay? And they're exactly one centimeter wide for reasons we'll talk about in a second. Okay, and here's my kind of artistic impression of a cuvette, right? So if I draw some 3D on that, right? So there's my cuvette, yeah. And in the cuvette, you put your sample, and in this case, it's CV, okay? Crystal violet, so it has this kind of reddy violet color, okay? It's kind of um, nice because it's usable then for colorimetry, yeah? Now, colorimetry, as described by Beer's law, if you think about it, why are things colored? <laughs> <laughs> Look at a window in a church, right? A stained glass window. Yeah, so white light comes through that window and just like maybe the crystal violet, the window pane looks purple. Why is that? Because it's actually absorbed what's called the complementary color, okay? Now, why do you see purple? Because that's what's left when the complementary color, in this case, kind of yellowy green at 565 nanometers, is blocked okay so what's what comes through is what you see okay so we transmit red orange blue indigo and violet and we absorb yellow and green okay if I remove yellow and green from white light ie what goes through I see a purpley kind of violet color hence complementary color. So that's the key thing, right? Get familiar with that concept of complementary color, okay? The color you actually see, be it on a shirt because that's just reflected light with some absorbed, or through a window which is just like, you know, a filter, right? You see what's left from white light. So that's what we call the complementary color. If I remember, I'll throw up a, a color wheel, right? So whatever color you see, you can just look on the opposite side of the wheel. I hope you see that's kind of a green yellow is absorbed for red violet, right? Okay, and you know, we know where those colors are. So green, yellow is right around six, 565 nanometers. And I think the first part of your experiment is actually getting a diode spectrometer and shining it through the sample just to see where light's absorbed in the spectrum, right? So is it red light that's absorbed orange, yellow? And hopefully you'll find it's kind of greeny yellow. Okay, given the game away there, but that's what you should expect. Okay, so materials absorb their complementary color. We see what's left. Now, here's the very concept of Beer's law, right? Okay, so we transmit, transmit light at 565 nanometers, which is the green light, right? Okay, so that's coming in through here, okay? Now, transmission is just a fraction, right? It's the, um, the intensity that's passed through over the intensity that you start with, right? So if I start with 100 photons of green and only 50 get through, transmission is 0.5, it's a fraction, yeah? So that's a fraction. So basically transmission is very simple, it's the fraction of photons of that particular color, the color that's absorbed 
that pass through. Now, if you think about it, the more stuff in the way, it's like, you know, building a thicker and thicker wall, right? So the more molecules that absorb green light that are in the way, in other words, the more concentrated the solution, the less light's transmitted, right? So a transmission of 100 is just pure glass, right? All the light goes through. But a transmission of zero is a brick wall, no light goes through, okay? And it's kind of a fraction in between, okay? And part of your lab is obviously to record the transmission as a fraction, and then T times 100 equals, you know, as a percent, nice and easy, right? So if you look in the, you know, I just stole the data sheet, right? <laughs> so there is my fraction, what gets through over what starts with, so T0 is what it starts with, and you know, just multiply up for a percent, the fraction times 100 is the percent, okay? So that's just straight cut and paste out of your lab. Where it gets interesting is down here because this is non-linear, okay? Non-linear. And Beer's law turns transmission into a linearity with concentration, right? And we actually measure something called absorption or absorbance. Absorbance. <laughs> A, right? So A again is a fraction, right? And that's linear in concentration, right? So absorption, how much light's absorbed as a fraction is proportional to concentration. CV in this case, right? Okay. However, A itself to make it equal, equals what's called the extinction coefficient, how well molecules absorb light, times the path length, times the concentration. And that the length is always one centimeter. So that's why we use the one centimeter cuvettes because the length is measured per centimeter, turn it into a one. It's easy, right? So basically you got this. So absorption is proportional to concentration, but absorption and transmission are not the same thing. <laughs> Turns out that's your important equation, all right? So later in the lab, okay, so it will just have you divide out the two intensities, right? If you like before and after it goes through to get the transmission, multiply by 100 from a fraction to a percent. And then the big one, the thing that's proportional to concentration is absorption, right? Or absorbance, right? And that's the minus log of T, right? So that one, the minus log of the fraction, right? So it's not the percent, it's the fraction. Okay, so be careful there. It says it there. <laughs> okay, so note that the value of T is the percent T over 100. So if I take 90% divided by 100, it's 0.9, right? So it's the fraction. Okay, so we take that fraction, take a log, change the sign, and that's absorption, and then A is proportional to concentration CV. And for all intents and purposes from that point forward, right, maybe I'll just write it on here. If you think about it, because now you can do a table of transmission, percent transmission if you really want, not that it's necessary, right? Because you can turn T minus log, right, into absorption, and then you plot absorption versus concentration, and that is just a kinetics plot, right? So instead of, because absorption and concentration are, oh, yeah, time. If I plot absorption instead of concentration, that's fine because it's proportional, right? Then I get my classic rate, right? So my classic raw data for any rate, right? So absorption versus time is the same really as concentration versus time for a reactant that's always going to go away in kind of a, an exponential way. And then the $64,000 question is, and this is the last part of your lab, is it first or second order? And that's when you go back to the notes, right? So go back to the notes and remind yourself, okay? So if you remember the integrated rate law, and this is what it wants you to do, it wants you to take that raw data, and I'll show you some data in a second, okay? Plot the natural log, not of, well, it's kind of fortuitous, right? It's concentration here of A, but it's actually natural log of absorption, right? Because absorption is proportional to concentration. Natural log of absorption, not concentration, versus time. For a first order process, it's linear, and the slope is minus k. So just get the value of the slope, rise over run, get k, bang, right? Okay. If it's linear, it's first order. So it's going to be CV to the first. And then you just get the value of k, right? Okay, fair enough. Okay. Now, 
if it's not first order, maybe it's second order. And we talked about, you know, how we do that. And I actually had you derive that for extra credit, if you remember. Okay. If it's actually second order, not first, that raw data turns into a positive slope line when the reciprocal of absorption, reciprocal of concentration, is plotted against time, and the slope is k. Okay, so you'll do exactly what I talked about in the in the notes. You'll plot, you'll turn the raw data set, right, which comes from your table, which if you plotted would look like that, right? That's your standard reactant going away, right? If you plotted it with natural log absorption versus time, if it's straight, it's first order. Okay, if you plotted one over reciprocal concentration versus time, it's linear with the positive slope, it's second order. All right, and these are real data sets, so you also look like this, or it will look like this, right? It's going to be a nice straight line for either first or second order. So you accept the one that's linear and reject the one that's nonlinear, right? Or one that has the best fit you accept. So you can tell, hey, is it first or second order with respect to CV? Okay, then since you now have K, <laughs> right, and order, and uh, I, I can't remember how, how I did it in the book, but then I think there's some little trick to figure out the, the order with respect to OH, right? Because it's um, CV, let me write the equation real quick, CV plus OH turns into CVOH essentially, right? So that's two reactants, right? So rate equals K CV to the M OH to the N. Okay, our focus is here and here, and then there's some trick to figure out that. You have to read about that in the packet. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Now, <laughs> I did leave you a little note on the, on the canvas there. I mean, I was getting a lot of people sending me stuff like really late on Sunday night, right? And I know I kind of left that deadline open till Sunday, <laughs> giving you plenty of time, but there's a lot of panic going on, right? So from now on, I'm unfortunately gonna have to set the deadline until at five on Friday, because I really want people to get to this earlier because panic sets in if you start this at 10 o'clock on Sunday, okay? So get it done earlier. And if you get it done when, I, when you're kind of asked to, which is on Wednesday, right? Okay, if you do this on Wednesday, like you're, like you're recommended, then you'll have time to talk to me at the office hour if you need to, okay? Unfortunately, I'm not answering questions over the weekend anymore because I, <laughs> I was walking around Chicago on the weekend, supposed to have a, <laughs> a late Valentine's thing, you know, outing with my wife down to the city. And she's, what are you looking at on your phone? I'm like, well, you know, students keep emailing me about their labs and <laughs> we're at some foofy restaurant, right? So that can't be happening anymore. So I'm moving the deadlines around a little bit. Okay, so I hope you guys understand that. All right, so stop there. Any questions, discussion or water chat? See you guys next time.